How are you, Sam? I'm good. You asked me about pistons last time. Which, what are the differences in pistons? I've got something for you today, mate. Come what on. have you got? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some school today with you, huh? So learn with Mick today. Yeah. What do you see here? I see. Hmm? I see your big head. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, a, for you. we've got heaps of pistons. They all look similar. Some are the same for same application, same engine. But I didn't have all the same thing. But I've got all different types here for you. All right, we're going to start. What the difference is between forged, cast, and hypertech. Right. This is a standard 351 Cleveland piston come out from the factory, they've got steel inserts in them, see that, metal plates, and they're slotted here for the oil to return, that's a cast piston, this is a Holden V8 piston, which is sort of like the VN style injected ones, but it's a 308, cast, they've taken away the steel inserts, but they've still got the slit for the oil to come out through the sides here, which is a little bit not very good, you know, because it's relying on the oil to drain back through there. So if you use the wrong oil in it, it blocks up the ring. And this is something special. This is a factory 308 piston as well. Very rare. It's called an L34 piston. They used these back in the days in the SLR 5000. They used them in Bathurst. Um, no steel inserts. It's a funny design. It's like an X, which made them very strong this way. Uh, oil holes in the side to drain back through the oil inside this inside there they've got the little drain backs They're a flat top I mean, The other ones were a dish But they ran 5,000 ball clearances and they called it a slipper piston This is what we call a liquid forge piston. They don't do these anymore. They weren't really a good piston in my eyes, but they stopped producing these. They're called a liquid forged. Uh, noisy. If you if to people were doing the ball clearances a little bit too tight and they were picking up on the ball, so they were actually grabbing here on the sides, so they canned them. This one is a hypertech piston. So that this is like a standard replacement for a 383 stroker. Believe it or not, that is a 383 stroker as well. Exactly the same. And this is what we're using the strokers that you drive around every day, like go to work and back in, go mm -hmm. for a bit of a thrash and that. This was designed to be more of a, th um, like a forge style piston than getting in the market. But as I said, there's a lot of failure in them. See where the rings are? They're really, really close to each other compared to the other one. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah, so a lot of heat was getting into there. It, was, it was, wasn't really a good idea. This one is a forged, nice. yeah, it's a forged piston, but the, it's a street smart piston, they call it. So this way you can drive this on the street as well. It's a flat top, three hour weight again. Really nice piston. I actually like this. This brand is really good. They come, they'll make a nice machining on them, that. Now this is a forged piston old school, TRW. These, they had them in the GT Falcons, these ones. And this is a squeeze cast, a squeezed piston, they call it. Squeeze, they squeeze it in the casting there, the way they do it. They don't pour it, it's a billet. They squash it, okay. and it's a lumpy top. Now that, believe it or not, is the same as that. Oh yeah. I don't look at it being dirty, but you know, that is a 351. That is a 351. The lump. I had them in the GTs and that. This one. It's a big boy. Yeah. The Hypertech. Different again. A little bit more... A bit quieter. Uh, not as rattly as the other ones are. This bad boy here, noisy. It's a full race piston, this one. Still looks very cool. Yeah, very expensive, this. Very expensive. This is full on CNC. So, what do we have? What's this? The lump of metal behind. Lump of metal. 
This is a piston. It doesn't look like a piston. Yeah, but this is what they're made out of. But what they do, they cut billets out of it. So they cut them. This is actually what it is. They cut chunks about this big. They heat them to 600 degrees. They put them on this press and they smash, they smash it down into the center. So it sits up like that. The billet's in a, in a, in a die and this big plunger comes in the center and goes bang, hits it. It's like play, play doh at that degree. <laughs> and I do a casting and it looks roughly like this. Does it, it basically does this shape in here, right? And it squeezes out. So it might be that long in the end. And it might be bigger or whatever. It hasn't got all this stuff, nothing. And then they do the machining on them the CNC. That's why forge pieces are very expensive. Now, applications. You want to know which is good, which is no good. Cast pistons last a lot longer than a forge piston. Now, why is that? Do you want to know why? Why? Because a forge piston, this piston here, in a motor, you'll get 30,000 Ks out of it. And that's it. What? So why do you pay all that money for it? Because you're going to go thrash a living Christ out of it. You want power. <laughs> this is what happens. This is what you pay for power. What happens with this piston? That's just going up the ball. This is cold. This is, this is why I say to people, what driving are you going to do? What are you going to do with a car? I say to me, oh, I'm going to go cruising on the weekend and occasionally I might take it to the racetrack. Occasionally. Mm. So what we'll do, we'll put a Hypertech piston. What are these in it? Because this is going to last a while. A long while. Not this. Because this thing, when it's cold, they do this in the ball. It's got five thou ball clear and six thou. It's doing this in the morning. Up, down, up. What's happening to the ball? What's happening it's here? Scraping the ball. Yeah. So, you know, when you pull these motors apart after, oh, my engine's starting to burn oil, my, my, my 350 Chev Stroker is, I've done, you know, only 30,000 Ks and why is it burning oil, Mick? And they go, because when you pull it apart and you see these two big, nice, shiny marks on the side of the cylinder bores, and you say, you have to bore it again, man. It's polish the bore. To, it's, um, it's worn out on an angle. What kind of driving were you doing? Oh, I went to the milk bar and got a pack of smokes the other day with it, and it happened. Yeah, so we don't use these on an everyday car. This is for, let's go give it to it. Give it heaps. Yeah, smash right. it down the track. Yeah, that's it. So, what do you use on the street? We're going to use a hypertech. Now you drive it every day and go on the weekend and thrash the living Christ out of it. So that's your best. That's your best, I think, for the street. Yep. What do you use for a race? We're going to, we're going to use this. I'm going to go mad in a quarter mile, thrash the living Christ out of it, and then park the car and then do it one month later. <laughs> <laughs> this one? This one's okay. We drive it on the weekend only. This one? We're going to drive it every day. We're going to go to work. We're going to go park it at the train station. We're going to go pick up groceries. Perfect. This one? Same. This one? Junk. We don't use this stuff anymore. <laughs> this is a collector's item. Anyone want to see all 34 pieces? I've got a set of them up on the, on the shelf there. I say to people, stop putting the forges in if you use them only for the street. Not good, mate, you know? They don't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If you've got a turbo in an LS, you'd put a forge in it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you have to put a forge in it. To withstand the pressure. Yeah, but um, not this. In the bin. Beautiful.